Okay. Hello, hello everyone. Hello and welcome to this this presentation on how to excel in the digital age. Uh, this is a webinar is a part of a series of webinar, and this specific webinar is about the admissions process at OPIT Open Institute of Technology. Uh, since uh, there are a few minutes before we start, um, in order for everybody to join this webinar, I'm gonna just welcome you with a, a video about uh, our institution. So I'm gonna show the video now and then while everybody else is joining, thanks. Okay, <laughs> thank you for um, bearing with me now that everybody is actually joining. Um, let me start the, the webinar. Uh, my name is Greta, I'm at the Marketing Admissions. I'm today here with Rosario, Director and Head of Student Services, and also Chiara, who actually has collected some questions from different uh, candidates throughout these uh, past weeks so that we would like to share with you. So the idea is it's a, like a webinar where we talk about the admissions process and how we are looking for individuals who display a passion for computer science. So some genuine enthusiasm about everything that is technical and also dedication to push the boundaries of technologies. So we're going to give you a brief introduction of OPIT and our programs. And then we just start talking about the admission process, answering all the questions that we have received. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, please um, take this opportunity to ask them at the end so that we can actually support you in your decision process. Um, but before we go into the uh, details of the admissions process, I'll just leave the floor to Rosario to talk a little bit about our mission. Okay, so thanks, uh, thanks Greta. Uh, welcome everybody, I'm Rosario, uh, and I'm very happy to welcome you, you to this webinar. So uh, what's the mission of OPIT? Uh, we are a uh, very young institution, and we aim to train the new next generation of leaders in the space of computer science, leaders and managers. How we want to do that? Uh, by offering a cutting edge education aligned uh, with the contemporary job market and an education that is flexible and affordable. So uh, available to as many people uh, as we can. So what sets us apart from the many competitors and the many uh, institutions that are on the market today? There are several aspects. Uh, the first thing that I would like to stress is that we are a fully accredited uh, institution, higher education institution at the European level. Our accreditation comes from the uh, uh, Maltese Authority. Our degrees are uh, officially recognized throughout Europe. Uh, in the European, uh, under the European qualification framework. And uh, because of this, they are uh, valid throughout the world. Again, we are designing, uh, developing, and we are offering to students starting from uh, next September degrees that are 
that have been uh, created as online native education. So they are flexible. Uh, the, all the content has been created from scratch uh, in order to be as much usable and uh, as effective as possible when uh, saw, saw and uh, learned through a screen and uh, um, through a remote education. Hope it is fully focused on uh, computer science and the technology uh, area in general. This allows us to select uh, and to gather the best uh, teachers, professors, all the best knowledge and uh, know-how in the sector and offer you as a potential students all this. I mentioned this already. We built from scratch our degrees uh, in order to answer not only what the job market is looking for today, but in a way we want to prepare professionals that are ready for the job market of tomorrow, trying to anticipate in a way the trends that we are seeing and that we researched uh, during our development. We want this education to be as affordable as possible uh, and to give you with this degree the highest quality possible in order for you to come out of your academic endeavor ready to hit the job market uh, running, let's say, with the skills uh, that the companies are looking for uh, and not uh, in a way like traditional universities uh, that are you know stuck somehow uh, in a lot of theoretical knowledge um, and at the end of the degree you find yourself you know entering a company and uh, starting another path of learning before being both useful for the company itself and advancing your uh, your skills and your career so this is basically uh, what sets us apart Thank you, Rosario. Okay, so uh, then if you have any further questions about OPIT, again, we can always get back to us and we can give you more details about our institution. Now, regarding the programs, the programs that Rosario was saying that will start in September, we have a Bachelor of Science in Modern Computer Science and a Master of Science in Applied Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. And I'm going to give you a very brief overview of those courses. And then again, we are available for more details. So the, the Bachelor of Science is a um, program that uh, it grants 180 CTS credits. It's over three years, but you can actually go for the fast track. So to finish it off in two years, if you kind of squeeze it a bit uh, your summertime. So basically instead of doing the, the third term in the second year, you just do it all over the summer. Uh, we will start in September. 2023, the 25th. It's a competence-based um, program. The teaching approach is about the competence that you gain. So there is, of course, a little bit of theory, but a lot of practice. We are very focused on the students with progressive assignments. That means that you will apply everything that you learn at your own pace, and you will be actually attended by tutors and faculties and the coordinator in order for you to deliver and all the progressive assignments um, along the way. So there are no final exam in the end. The program is divided into a semester where you have the core courses at the beginning, core courses in computer science. They're very modern. We call it modern computer science because of that, because everything has been reshuffled, refocused about what is computer science today. Uh, so uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, software engineering, cybersecurity, of course, operating systems, programming, everything that is the fundamentals. And then you move on to the electives where you choose five electives out of um, an array of 13. Along the way, you will also have some general courses in business like communication, marketing, digital marketing, for instance, uh, project management, because these skills are also required today by companies for those of you who actually want to start a career or already is in a career of, of computer science. At the end, you have a dissertation that could be like it's a thesis that could be also done um, through an internship or a practical project. Uh, and you will be, of course, supported by um, our, our faculty. As I said, it's a two or three years uh, fast or regular track, depending on your willingness to study during the summer. I already see there is a chat, um, but um, question, we'll take the questions at the end.
thank you. Um, the Master in Applied Data Science and Artificial Intelligence is actually a, a Master of Science of 90 CTS, so 18 months. 12 months is the fast track, otherwise it's 18 months. Again, it depends if you want to do uh, the summer term, uh, study during the summer term. I will start on the 25th of September, and in this case, it's a master for those of you who want to become data consultant. So apply your knowledge in multiple industries today, uh, data science and artificial intelligence are the buzzwords. They have to be comprehended, understood, and kind of um, applied in, the, in a specific way. So we just started with the foundational tech courses. Well, everything that you learn is about machine learning, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, Python, for instance. And then the second semester is all about application. So how to apply data science and artificial intelligence in the different sectors, in different functions. Again, you will have business communications, project management, so courses that are more link, linked into the, what is the soft skills, let's say, area, but also business skills area. And you have a final project internship at the end again, where you can develop, further develop, uh, and further, further apply the, the different skills uh, understood and gathered during, during the master. Both in, in this case as well, there are no final exams. You will be assessed along the way and everything for both courses is online. 50% of the lessons are live lessons like we're doing now and they're recorded in a platform. By the way, we just uh, had a webinar about our platform. It's available on YouTube and I will tell you a bit more about uh, at the end of this presentation about next week presentation and all the webinars that you can find. But uh, as I said, 50% it's live and 50% is asynchronous. So you would just have all the material in the platform before the lesson. You can attend that after the lesson. So it's a complete like online course but it's also a course where you will see your, your fellow students see the, the faculty interact with the tutors and have the possibility to uh, do a lot of project together if you cannot attend the lessons as I said they're recorded and you can watch them afterwards okay but like let's go now and focus a little bit on the main topic of this presentation which is about the um, general um, entry requirements. And I think we have some questions that Chiara gathered for us. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Greta. So my name is Chiara and I'm part of the admission team at OPIT. In the past few weeks, we gathered lots of questions and we decided to take uh, into account the most common, I'd say. So uh, regarding the gen general entry requirements, I'm going to ask to my colleagues Greta and Rosario about the um, documents that uh, the, the candidates need to um, submit during the admission process um, regarding the English certificate also. Uh, so we, um, we received many questions about which kind of English certificate do they need to take as part of the admission process. Um, and then also regarding the um, previous academic studies. So is there any specific technical background needed to undergo both the bachelor or, uh, and the master degree? And if, the, uh, if a student already studied something technical, so a technical back background, um, is there any chance that we recognize some previous uh, studies, some previous exams or CTS? Okay, thanks, Kara. So there, there are many questions. So let's let's go in in order uh, about them. So uh, first of all, it's about what are the um, the requirements to um apply for the different programs. So first of all, we have the difference between the bachelor and the master. In both both cases, we need the previous educational level certificates. So if you are applying for the bachelor, we would need your high school certificate, um, secondary school certificate. If you are applying for the master, we would need your undergraduate degree, so the bachelor degree. And it could be in any discipline. So there are no specific prerequisites about attending the master degree. So just send us your documents when you apply and just we're going to review this, this, what you send us. And if we, have, if we have any questions, we can get back to you. Uh, regarding the English level certificate that you said, that they ask, um, we have a requirement of a B2 level certificate or equivalent for both courses. Um, so that means that we, we accept many different type of um, certificates and 
you can be mother tongue first of all so there is no certificate required otherwise we accept TOEFL uh, IELTS the Duolingo English test the Camry certificate um, the level has, must be the B2 level or equivalent um, with the points indicated in the slides of course if you if you're just about to reach those points uh, just send us like the, doc the document that you have received and we can also have a test ourselves we have an interview test uh, done by our one of our professors um, the, the English level will also be assessed during the motivational interview, which is an important part of our assessment. Uh, and for, for this, we talk about it a little bit later. Um, but we do also have the credit transfer. So the acceptance of previous learning. Maybe I leave the floor here to Rosario to explain things in a better way. Yes, thanks, Greta. Um, okay, yeah, we do have the, uh, offer the opportunity to uh, our prospect students uh, to let us evaluate uh, their previous learning uh, achievement. We have a specific policy and process for this. So first of all, there are many different kinds of previous learning. Uh, there are uh, those called uh, informal uh, learning achievement uh formal learning achievement and then there are those kind of certifications like uh, aws uh, uh, prince certification cisco any kind of professional qualification that can be you know uh, evaluated and then there is the credit transfer that is basically uh, the check of previous exams uh, that the student has passed in another higher education institution. So for the time being, at Popit, we offer the latter mainly. Uh, so we are able to uh, check and confront uh, your previous uh, exams in another, in another recognized higher education institution, confront them to our curriculum. There, there is a process for that. Um, there are basically uh, four different... Uh, uh, criteria against uh, this previous education is uh, confronted. The first one is validity. I mean, this means that the exam that you took in the past must be uh, must match the learning outcome of uh, one of the courses inside uh, our degrees in order for it to be considered. The second criteria is uh, sufficiency, uh, which means that you have to provide uh, uh, enough documentation for us to analyze this. And this means your official transcript from the from your previous experience. If possible, the scriptures of the of the of the content of the courses, so the syllabi. Uh, then the third criteria is authenticity authenticity, sorry. Uh, of course everybody, every person that submit uh, uh, any kind of achievement for it to be considered uh, is bearing the responsibility uh, to submit authentic documentation. We're going to check that this kind of documentation uh, to see whether they, it's authentic or not. The fourth criteria is uh, a bit more uh, nuanced and it's called the currency criteria. What this means is that, let's say you took an exam uh, uh, in a previous uh, university environment uh, uh, 12, 13 years ago, uh, and then you have not practiced that kind of uh, expertise uh, in the last uh, 10, 12 years. In this case, it, it's usually, it means that your knowledge is not current anymore. So there's a high chance that your exam will not be transferred. But this process is done by a committee, an internal committee uh, in which I sit. Uh, there's uh, the program head, Professor Lorenzo Livi, uh, there's the rector as well. Uh, and so once we go through this, we will be able to uh, tell you if and how many, if it's the case, uh, exams and ECTS uh, we can uh, keep for you. What's the advantage of this? Uh, mainly that you uh, are allowed to uh, follow uh, nonetheless, the course, uh, the correspondent course in our uh, degree while you're enrolled, but you will have 
the credits already registered in your uh, academic career at OPIT, and you will not be it will not be necessary to uh, attend the uh, assessment for that specific course. So that's basically and, and moreover, all I have to say. There is a discount of credits as well. Sorry, we yes, of course. <laughs> we <laughs> apply. There is uh, uh, an economic discount uh, attached to every uh, ECTS recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario, for that. Um, and I don't know, Chiara, if there are other questions that you received. Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> so thank you for, for replying. Um, so yes, actually, being uh, completely online, uh, we received many uh, questions regarding how the overall application procedures uh, works and if there's any uh, specific deadline the students need to meet. And also uh, a very good question, I'd say. So how much is important the commitment and the motivation show in the, in the process, in the motivational interview? Okay, that's very good. So we just move to the, the next slide. So how to apply because that can be combined in this in this slide. So first of all, to answer the questions, like we have um, an application online. So if you go on our website, you can use the apply now button. It's a green button. It's difficult to miss it out in, in the application page. And there is a form to fifth to be filled in. So in that form, you can just put all your data and and also upload the documents. Regarding the question about um, deadlines, the applications um, are now rolling. Uh, of course, we're starting in September. So in, uh, in September, we would stop uh, processing the applications. So the sooner that you apply, the better, I would say. But as I said, you can just uh, use this, this button. The application is for free. And fill in the, the fill the form with all your data and then you will be asked and prompt to upload some documents uh, we would require you to upload your passport or id then your diploma and transcripts so if you're applying for the bachelor degree because you can select as you can see here you can select the program if you it's a bachelor you have to upload your high school diploma if you if you don't have it yet because some people just um uh, finished their high school um uh, in the in the past month well you can send it at a later stage otherwise your diploma and transcript or your bachelor degree and transcripts um again if you have it available already the english level certificate um in case you're working it would be advisable to upload also your CV so that we can have a better understanding about your profile. And then for any other documents that you want to send us, you can always use the email. So uh, we are available to, up, we can upload them in our system uh, um, at a later stage. Then as you request to ask about the motivational interview, that's a very important part, um, step of the application process. We do not require, for instance, uh, motivational statements or reference letter because we have the motivational interview, which is a very, very important step and is conducted uh, as well with um, Rosario and the admission teams. So maybe Rosario, you want to say something about the motivational interview? Sure, thanks. Thanks again, Greta. And this is a, a very important uh, question. Basically, this is uh, the, the, the last step for us uh, um, to evaluate our candidates. And it's very important to know what is uh, the underlying motivation of the people that wants to apply and be enrolled in our candidates. Uh, this is an interview that is usually run by me together with uh, someone from the admission team. What is the aim of it is to know better what are the candidates, every candidate passions, basically, what's their long-term goal and uh, in a way, um, the suitability, uh, you know, for, for our program. And uh, if uh, their, their goals are aligned with what we want to, to offer. Uh, it's a way to know each other better, uh, if you want. Um, there are no uh, questions where uh, you can uh, get, you can give a, a, a wrong answer. Uh, because it's not an evaluation on skills, uh, on hard skills. Uh, it's a way, again, to, to better understand what's driving 
your uh, your will uh, to increase and improve your knowledge and to get uh, a degree basically one other thing that i can say uh, i would say this because uh, not because i am speaking and i'm running the interview but it's the first moment um, actually in the entire process where you have the chance to speak to me uh, as a, di a director, you will have chance the chance to ask me mm, maybe some questions that you did not ask to the admission committee, and we can interact. Uh, and another important thing that we uh, do during this interview is give room to your questions at the end of the process because we want everything to be to be clear and we want to be on the same uh, you know page. At the end of the interview, um, a committee, the committee will meet and decide uh, on, on admission. And we uh, ask uh, you and we give you the possibility to, under, of course, under request, to get some financial aid, um, a form after the interview uh, upon request will be sent to you and it's a, a form specifically uh, tailored for the request of financial aid there are different questions on uh, your uh, financial situation and uh, on your uh, uh, you know reasons why you want to ask uh, a, a scholarship in a way the criteria uh, um, on which we assign these uh, Scholarships uh, are two criteria, basically. The first one is need, so the financial situation. And the second one is merit. Uh, so the, the overall uh, uh, application, all the documents you submitted, how the interview uh, went uh, together with your financial situation will collectively uh, guide our decision in the assigning of these uh, financial aids. Uh, the amount of the financial aid uh, are variable and up to a maximum, so their partial scholarship, it arrives to a maximum of 50% of the total tuition uh, fee for the two, two different programs, of course. Fees are different for bachelor and master. We will see this in a, in a few minutes. Okay, okay. <laughs> great, thanks, thanks again. Uh, so it's very interesting to know how the application is going, but uh, we get in more and more questions also about the further steps of the application. So what's happening uh, in, in the step uh, after the admission interview? So um, could you explain us a bit the process and which uh, criteria it's taken into consideration uh, during the admission process? Uh, and uh, how long does it take to communicate the, the admission results to the students. Okay, no, that's very important. And thanks, Chiara, for collecting all these questions. So um, it's about the committee feedback, basically, and admissions decision. Um, so once uh, we have collected everything. What happens is the committee will review. There is, the committee is the admission teams, the director, and also the head of programs and any other person involved, depending on a case by case. Uh, we evaluate and assess the application. The committee will review immediately the documents and consolidate the feedback. So there is a feedback consolidation. Um, this is done by case by case, so on each single um, individual. What happens then? Um, we communicate individually, um, notify the in individually the admission decision. We try to ver be very clear and we do that in a timely manner. That means that usually uh, the committee means uh, um, once a week and then we just co communicate uh, the results a um, few days or a maximum week after that. So we kind of try to be uh, clear and timely. Um, what happens next, of course, if uh, everything goes well and you are admitted, uh, you're going to be sent like a notification and you can um, receive a, a contract where you sign the con after signing the contract and paying the deposit, you can start the journey with us. So you will be immediately receive a welcome message. Um, you will be asked to like uh, to fill in some other forms. For instance, we are sending out now some uh, stationery and gadgets to our students, and then we you um, later on you will be sent some other information in order how to join us to start uh, using the platform, etc. So, in order to future proof your your tech career. 
That's great. Thanks. Thanks for replying. Uh, so lastly, uh, we're getting uh, many questions regarding also the fees. So regarding the fees, uh, uh, could you explain us a bit uh, about the amount, the total amount of the bachelor uh, program and also the master program? And we talked uh, a little bit already uh, before uh, about the financial aid request, but is there any scholarships available also for students and what students need to do in order to be eligible for for the scholarships. Okay, thank you, Chiara. Thank you for that. So I'm going to move on again to another slide here about the tuition fees. So the bachelor in modern computer science is um, it costs four four thousand five hundred euros per year over three years, and the master in applied data science is six thousand and five hundred over the entire period. Uh, both programs can be paid in installments. Or if you pay in advance, so the year in advance, um, you will get a 20% reduction. So the, the bachelor will cost 3,600 per year and the master 5,200. Um, as we said before, we have some financial aid. So there are partial scholarships up to 50%. Uh, they're based on need and merit. As we said, first you apply, you sit for an interview, you will be sent a financial aid request where you can actually outline all your needs and the committee will give you like as much as as possible given your current situation. Um, the application, as I said, is very, very straightforward. There is a button, you just apply and send us the, your document. But I suppose there are, there are some questions, well, live questions. So uh, before we move to that, I just wanted to say one thing. Today we talk about uh, the admissions. Uh, last week we talked about the platform. Before that was the the, the founder that talked about Opit. Next week, and I'm going to just go back one second to the previous slide just to show you, uh, we are going to have um, a demo lesson with uh, one of our professors. So if you want to join us, you can actually, um, we're going to send you the invitation and you can actually see how a lesson is done. Um, for all the other webinars that we have run, you can see on YouTube, um, the, the channel is uh, at OP356 and join us like and review uh, this webinar and other webinars that we have done in the past. Okay, but now I think there are some questions uh, as well in the, the chat. Uh, yes, uh, somebody is asking about uh, the courses if they are fully online. Yeah, well, we, we confirmed the courses are online. Um, they are online. Fifty percent of the lessons are like asynchronous, so you will gather all the material on the platform, and the rest of fifty percent are live lessons and projects. But if you don't have time to attend this lesson, you can always watch them recorded. Okay, um, I'm just going back to the last slide about the fees and just to notify you here, if you want to chat with us, you can write to us on hello at hopit.com or just write to us with this scan. You can scan the WhatsApp number and we can actually get back to you on, on WhatsApp. Okay, and then if there are any, any further questions um, here just to answer them, today or any other day, you can actually write to us and we are available um, anytime to answer you. Okay. Yes, there is a question about the application. As we said, there is a apply now button on the website and you can actually easily access the application there and fill in the form. Okay, so if there are no further questions, thank you for joining us today. This, this webinar has been recorded. You will find more information again on our website and um, on, on, on YouTube. You can rewatch it in case you need more, more information about them. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank, thank you, everybody. It's been Have a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.